Hello, hacksters. Welcome to Tuesday. Uh, it is my favorite day of the week. Tuesday, we get to uh, interview someone for Hexter Cafe, and we have a returning guest this week, Jason Kreidner from Beagleboard.org, uh, the creator of the Beagle Bone. Uh, so excited, as usual, to have you on. And we've got some new cool technology to look at today. Um, oh, my microphone's way out of the way. How about we fix that? Yeah, Jason, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. It's really nice to chat to you again, Alex. Um, I, I hear you you're going to um, Open Hardware Summit. I am. Uh, and yeah. Ginger from the Hexer team as well. You're going to be attending virtually, it sounds like. Anything you're excited I, yeah, about? Uh, everything, right? It's just, um, you know, last time we chatted, you know, everybody was just starting to go back. And um, and now I've had like a, you know, a year of trade shows. And, and this is like, I'm, I'm really sad to be missing open hardware because it's absolutely one of my favorites. Um, but um, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I'm I'm just excited about everybody getting to hang out and uh, get to lurk vicariously through um, everyone else. Oh, is there uh, another upcoming event that you're looking forward to attending? Um, I, I, I'm going. To, I've got well, one of the, probably most looking forward to is in Prague is um, Embedded Open Source mm -hmm. Summit um, at the end of June. Oh, um, I'm gonna check that out. Yeah, Prague. That's a um, if you haven't been to Prague, it's pretty cool. Um, and I hear it's beautiful. Yeah, it is. And the Embedded Linux conference um, is now part of that Embedded Open Source Summit. And um, so I've got a, a paper to present there. And so now I have to go. So I'm excited about it. A paper? Well, just a, a talk, right? So sorry, it's not so much a paper as a, as a, I have a, I have a presentation on a technical topic, right? A little bit related mm -hmm. to all this stuff, right? But, yeah. but kind of this, the, a little bit of the under the um, ways to simplify development um, um, in our tosses, right? So um, I'll be talking about how you can use Linux to make developing on our tosses easier, right? So um, mainly Zephyr, right? So it's all about mm -hmm. how to make Zephyr stuff easier because we're, we're doing our first, this is our first microcontroller board. Oh. Um, and so we're doing stuff with Zephyr, um, but we're trying to kind of leverage all the um, the knowledge base that is the, the, the Linux kernel um, and, you know, that whole community. And there's a lot of overlap between the Zephyr and Linux communities. And mm. um, yep. Yeah. But um, it, the, oh, the, got, the Zephyr stuff is really fun, and, and this thing is really cool, too. Yeah, they've got, uh, ooh, let's fix the aspect ratio here. They've got actually a link to that uh, event on the Zephyr RTOS page. And just for folks who may not be aware, RTOS stands for Real-Time Operating System, and it's a, a sort of tight little technological loop that allows you to, uh, well, as they say, build secure, connected, future-proof mm. devices. <laughs> but yeah. Um, Cool. So people who are near Prague or are going to Prague for uh, that event, go check out Jason. We've also got your Twitter. We've got uh, a prior interview that we did. Uh, was this last year already? Wow. Uh, yeah, it was, it was in late summer right, or midsummer, right? So the angle yeah. we watched the S64, right? So Beagle, um, I wanted to ask you uh, maybe a bit later because you, you, I know you've got some exciting new stuff to show off, but I'd love to hear about how this stuff is going with the um the beagleboard ai 64 beaglebone ai 64 there we go yeah cool all right so you just showed a little device with a big antenna on it what's the deal really with big antenna um and that really big antenna so that you can talk to it uh, um at least a kilometer away right so if you're wow. if you're if you're outdoors right um it's using long range low power wireless so uh sub gigahertz so if you're in you know, Asia, it's like 866 um, megahertz range or 868 or something like that. Um, in the US, um, it's like 915 megahertz. Um, and so you can talk to it a lot further away. Um, the radio in it is software programmable, so you can do all sorts mm -hmm. of different modulation schemes. Um, and we're supporting um, out of the box kind of one of the schemes that's um, uh, part of the IEEE 802.15.4 um, G standard. Mm -hmm. um, to try to get as much interoperability as possible, but there's just not a lot of devices that are out there, um, you know, that, that um, people can 
kind of hack with. Um, um, and you can turn this into a gateway. So you can turn any Lex computer um, into a device that you can talk to these with, or you can get a Beagle Play that has um, uh -huh. one of these radios built into it, right? So it's got, um, it's already set up to talk to it as a, as a gateway. Um, these also do talk Bluetooth, low energy, um, and you could also, uh, there's MTS software for talking um, open thread or, um, you know, the, the Zigbee or Matter. Um, so there's a lot of other protocols that it can handle. Yes. And just to throw this in there, uh, we did have someone jump in being like, a Beagle board with two Ethernet ports would be awesome for apps like routers and fire firewalls. And Josh responds, the new Beagle plate does have two Ethernet physical ports now, including one big E. Yeah, the other one, though, is um, it's a little different, right? So I'm using an RJ11 jack on it um, ah. just because um, uh, this is, oh, I just realized this is a prototype board, not the production board, because it's got these little tabs, the production board is smooth. Um, mm. But it's an RJ11, it's single pair Ethernet as opposed to standard Ethernet. Um, so that also was going for, for, for long distances. You can run um, a kilometer of, of twisted pair shielded cable and it, you know it's for building things in a, you know on a factory floor or, or your home if you um one of the reasons we kind of picked rj11 to be super hackable is that you if you're if you're in a house that has home wiring um you can just use the home wiring um to act as your your ethernet um oh. so it's yeah um a little different right so um we're we're trying to make it really a lot easier to add um these just just sensors to a, a, a gateway and um so there's if you look on the beagle play now it doesn't have like the big beagle bone headers right so yeah i was wondering about that so you can't connect standard capes to these but you do have these no. microelectronica click uh breakouts yeah. on both of them like my camera just does not want to focus on this, right? <laughs> yeah. So I, for a lot of people, these these cape headers, right? Even though they're super super functional and you can do all sorts of amazing things, but it has tons of GPIO and tons of capability. Um, capability. Uh, capability. Ah. <laughs> Thanks for catching me on that. <laughs> I had to do um, it. <laughs> um, I just won't get to focus there. Um, but I'm, um, I'm opening one up over here so we can zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Um, you do have also beautiful uh, images on the website. So, so for a lot of people, that's just really intimidating. So with, with Beagle Play, you kind of the name about it being fun, right, is um, is that you're not, you don't get the, yeah, it zooms up too big. For Ooh, this one. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, good. Um, oh, no. <laughs> I'll just uh, escape here. There we go. Um. Yeah, the, it's um, um, a lot less intimidating, I hope, right? And 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 some of the magic um, is that I'm gonna mm. just connect this. Is that these 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 clipboards? Um, you can just kind of plug them in, and there's mm. there's a new set of them. So we've been working with Microelectronica, who makes over 1,300 of these things, and that just won't focus, will it? Um, wow, look at that. Um, but I think sometimes um, if you put your hand over the background, like if it's trying to focus on your face, it'll like force it to. No there face. we go. <laughs> um, uh, so there's there, they have about they have over thirteen hundred of these add-on boards, um, and we've worked with them to define an an ID scheme, right? So if you, I have some some funky uh, click prototypes here. And Ooh. you'll see this little ID logo here in the corner. Oh, yeah. Um, huh. um, and that's new. They haven't uh, started shipping these yet. But, um, you know, we've got um, a 250 plus uh, clicks that, um, um, that we can support already with existing drivers. Um, and we've got a, a manifest scheme. So, and, and we've, we've got a way to put these IDs on the boards so that. Um, uh, when you plug it in and power it on, um, it just comes up um, just like a, oh, wow. that little OLED click. And so I've got a little um, kind of hack if you want to see it, right? So I wonder if you want yes, to see, see my screen. Um, with 
with Beagle Play, like all the other Beagles, um, you plug it in over USB, and it gives you a um, uh, you know a, an IP connection, right? So this is kind of the magic IP address that shows up for just a connect device connected over over USB, um, and you can browse to port three thousand, right? So let me just start at the beginning. Um, uh, what um, demo itis here? Um, Standard live demo behavior. <laughs> Oh, that's what it is. I always appreciate it when people do them anyway. <laughs> so it matters to put HTTP, not HTTPS, right? It's answering on port 80. Oh. Um, but there's some different things running on here. One of them is VS Code, um, um, which does use HTTPS. And the first time you log into it, you have to tell it to trust the certificate. But um, so now I'm into the um, development environment for the board. And if I press uh, Control dot there we go i'm getting to a terminal um and i've got uh just a couple a little python hack in here uh, clicks OLED. and if i run well let me just ls show everybody it's there and then time to type one handed <laughs> Um, ah. oh. Helps it do two-handed. No, uh, can't. Unable to open a console terminal. Um, it really wants a console terminal on there. Hmm. Mm. Um, well, I'm going to switch. You can still see my screen, right? Yep. <laughs> um, don't know. So let me just blow this up. Boom, 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 boom. Nice. Play, click, so let's see. Um, this is, I'm just SSH into it, so um, let's see. Oh. It's just trying yeah. to mess with me, isn't it? It's just trying to mess with me. No, I'm running on the screen, but now it's not running it on the board. It's not oh, no. So, um, uh, live editing. Um, hey, it so shows you frame legit. buffer one <laughs> dev. What what frame buffers do I have? FB. I've got an FB one. Uh, um, let's just force this to FB zero because I think it's set for a frame buffer zero. Yeah, there it goes. Um, yeah. Um, the fun part wasn't supposed to be the little demo, right? The fun mm -hmm. part is the fact that um, when you power it up, that the frame buffer automatically comes up, right? So it's automatically yeah. got a, a, a Linux display, right? That just comes up because I've got the... So I didn't have to do anything special to um, to load the driver for that, right? It just happens because um, this is one of those clicks with an ID. Um, in fact, I'm going to just go ahead and unpower that, you know, I don't know how many people recommend, hey, you shouldn't just pull power on the board, but you know. <laughs> oh, well. So yeah, these um, are the click boards we're talking about. Uh, uh, they do they have a little counter down here at the bottom. 1369 available click boards. You name it. We got it. <laughs> I'm really curious about this new ID system. That's rad. Uh, I didn't see anything immediately on their website about it, but it sounds like they're getting released soon and we'll we'll stay tuned for more info about that. Yeah, um, it, it, there's, it's just getting started, right? And um, mm -hmm. I think it's just going to make things a whole lot easier um, for, you know, people that aren't that comfortable with, like, you know, the cape headers, right? So we're not giving up on the idea of, um, um, you know, capes and cape headers and, like, lots more IOs and supporting the peer use and all the, the kind of stuff that makes, um, you know, BeagleBone special. Um, but we are trying to do things here to make things a lot um, easier to use. Um, and of course, trying to keep things affordable too, right? So this is a, you know, a, a sub $100 computer. So. Yeah, and I wanted to show uh, just really quickly, I, I pulled this out of the box because we were having some uh, some focusing issues before, but I just wanted to, you know, we, it, we didn't really do a, an unboxing here. I want to show everyone oh, what's yeah. in the kit here. So here we've got the Beagle Play. 
super gorgeous. This sideways HDMI connector is really interesting, uh, but very ripe for some cool enclosures there. You've got USB-C, you've got a little uh, battery for an RTC on there. Microbus, like we've been talking about, that's where you'd plug in that uh, OLED screen that Jason's got. Micro SD card. Um, and there's a bunch of different uh, IOs that I think you can program to communicate with the user as well. The Beagle, uh, if, if I don't understand, if I understand correctly, the Beagle Connect Freedom has more of these little uh, like LEDs and buttons and stuff, but just to show really quick. Uh, so we've got the board in there and it's uh, mm -hmm. anti-static and uh, silica gel. <laughs> foam on top, <laughs> keeping it nice and safe. We've got a uh, getting started info card. Beagleplay.org. Uh, you've got your own address for that. Then we've got antennae. Three of them. Four of them. Four of them. Four. Uh, plus some standoffs. But let's take a look at these. Can you tell us about the different antennas that we have in here? So three of them are the same size. There's the the smaller ones that are good for two point four or five gigahertz. Uh -huh. And then there's one. Um, bigger one, and that's for the the sub gigahertz, right? So if you flip the board over, you'll see there's um, four U.FL um, connectors. Those those little um, on the bottom oh, left, yeah, yeah, those little ones, right? And um, so the one you see the one that says sub G, um, right there. Yep, that's the one that takes the long one, and the, all the other ones get the short one. So the two, Ooh. the small square, the, the metal can that's um, that's square, um, that's the the Wi-Fi chipset. Cool. Um, Yep, and then um, the big metal rectangle is the sub gigahertz, right? And it's it's just put in a can, not to try to keep people from being able to get at it, but just right to keep from uh, just for the FCC CE certification, right? To keep there from being extra kind of emissions noise. Makes um, sense. Yeah, so um, you can still you know, fully in the schematics. Now the the Wi-Fi module is like a, is another is a board, but the um, the circuit for the 1352, that's the name of the chip that does the sub gigahertz radio is just down there on the board itself. I saw a cool tip recently for installing these antennas. Uh, someone showed uh, using the end of a pen or pencil with like some blue tack on the bottom or tape on the bottom and sticking the, the antenna to that and then pushing it down in place, which seems to me, I got to try that because it seems like it's a lot less likely to end up with wrecked fingernails and like, uh, wondering if I'm going to break the whole thing. It always takes more yeah. force than I expect, and I'm always afraid that it's just going to totally break it when I try to install yeah, it. Yeah, you know, true. And, and it's honestly one of the biggest disappointments for me in the just like, shipping it without the antennas connected. We do um, provide an, an STL file for anybody who wants a 3D print and clay a case that kind of hold the antennas kind of neatly all together um, and do that so you can you know, print that print that case. Um, but I, I'm hoping that at some point we could ship on the, right now we were concerned about the, um, the antennas kind of scratching up everything because it shipped into mm. the box and things you have to deal with everything shaking as it's shipping. Right. So, um, we couldn't really ship the, um, antennas, uh, attached. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of bummed about that, but yeah. Um, you know, you've got all the antennas there. Um, and of course, you know, if you want to put, um, you know, it's this is really similar to something like um, Laura, right? Um, and if you want to take one of those other antennas mm -hmm. and like put things even further um, away, right? You can put um, you know larger antennas on there because you've just got those those U dot FLs. Um, kind of jumping around, but um, yeah. if you see the little you know the click that's powered up there now. I don't know if you still got my. Yep. Um, um, most of oh, this, is it on the. Haha. Um, right. So um, it, most of the, the sensors um, and Linux just show up to this IIO subsystem. And you can see I've got this um, OPT 3001 um, mm. that happened to be the, the sensor that I connected. So you just ask IIO, all right, um, info. Um, that's the command that you run. And it'll talk, tell you about the different uh, sensors that you have connected. Um, so right now it's saying that I have. Um, um, lumens of 133, um, and if I just cover that up and rerun it, right, um, I should see um, much less light, <laughs> 0 0.8. Um, and of course, it's Linux. You can do fun things like uh, watch dash in zero, I, I, O, info, and just have it kind of display it live. Cool. Right, you and, see the number uh, changing on there, covered up. Uh, uncover it 
Right. And I didn't have to install any drivers or anything to, to make that work. Right. Um, so, you know, you don't have to go searching for these Python libraries or these, um, you know, all these, the, the examples, uh, you know, in you know, Arduino language in order to go talk to, to basic sensors. Right. Um, so right now I think we, um, there's about 40 of them that they make with these, uh, with the IDs. Um, I think we have about 10 of them that we've got like kind of all, all set. Um, and, you know, kind of once we just start making the website that lists them all and they'll start putting them up for sale. So that's kind of an any day thing right now. So cool. Um, yeah. And yeah, uh, you mentioned a bunch of the oop, wrong one. There we go. Um, on the Beagle Connect Freedom page, you mentioned uh, how Beagle Connect uh, eliminates the need for having all those libraries because you shift the burden onto the Linux kernel, but also mm -hmm. uh, you're sort of eliminating. Mm, where is it? Uh, da, 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 da. Eliminating the need for the layer of software development. But there's also some stuff in here about how um, you don't have to do as much like low level stuff because that's taken care of a lot by this. And I was kind of wondering what that meant. And it sounds like you're partly referring to the situation where you don't have to, uh, with the ID sy system with the clickboards where it just automatically knows what to do with them. Yeah, it's there's a, there's a bunch of different things working together to kind of um, make that happen, right? And it's still a little bit of a work in progress, but but we're taking all this stuff that we're doing here to make the clickboards just work under Linux, but we're taking the interfaces on the 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 Beagle Connect Freedom um, and taking those interfaces and making them show up um, under under Linux, right? Um, so there's a, a thing called Graybus. So if there's a um, I don't remember the name of that. There's a uh, Beagle Connect. Um, if I start the Beagle Connect gateway and I've got a Beagle Connect figured, uh, configured to be a gateway, um, then I can just have those devices um, automatically show up on the, the Beagle Ooh. play, right? So I, I, if I power on one of these, it'll act like a, um, um, the one of these sensors, just like it acted if it was local. Uh -huh. Yeah, Josh uh, has a related question which i think you kind of just uh covered but he does mention is it like the old school cape manager where it loads the device free blob for the click or tree blob <laughs> it's, a, it's a little bit different because we've actually set it up to be a platform device instead of um through a device tree um so uh, so it's how things have kind of migrated so cape manager the old cape manager used to load these device tree fragments in the kernel at runtime and now things have migrated to where it's in the bootloader and it patches the device tree as it boots it up um even though the um the the modules themselves aren't hot plug um in this case the the microbus stuff is um is more hot plug because we're not actually using um device tree overlays we're using these um um, these manifest files. So we've created a, a bus driver inside of, of Linux and I'm probably getting a little too deep for most people, but mm. there's actual, um, it actually looks like a bus um, to um, the, 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 the Linux kernel. Um, and in the probing of the bus is when it fetches the ID. Um, um, unlike the, 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 um, the capes, uh, you know, today aren't handled as, as, um, um, as bus drivers in Linux. Um, so this is a, a little bit more uh, likely to end up in the mainline kernel than what we did for the for the capes. Cool. Um, of course, we'll continue to support it, but our goal is to really improve the Linux kernel itself so that everybody benefits from this. Mm. I wanted to show off that website that you mentioned, uh, or well, this is the one that's linked in the, uh, on this little card here, beagleplay.org. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, but specifically, you mentioned that there's this uh, enclosure that you can get that you can 3D print to hold the antennas in place and stuff. Uh, and so first up, there's all this beautiful documentation, including close up photos. So if you want some beautiful, uh, you just want to dig in and have a look at what's on there, you can uh, do that on that website in the uh, documentation. There's uh, more info about it. And then- Oh, also, you found oh, it. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, it was not hard. Uh, Beagle Play oh, Design good. Repository. So you go to git.beagleboard.org slash Beagle Play, and you can also get to this place. Uh, but yeah, there's this uh, enclosure directory where you can find those files for 3D printing and a readme. Certified open source, yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay. Next year, we'll have to see you at Open Hardware Summit. 
I hope so. I really hope so. Um, Beagle is a sponsor of the Open Hardware Summit as well as, I'm, as well personally, and um, it's just kind of um, you know, family life is just kind of keeping things busy, so I don't have time to, to get over there. But um, it's nice that you showed all that, that that extra stuff, right? Because it is really different, I think, from like most of the single board computers out there that Beagle is. Um, is open hardware, right? So um, we get the certifications. Um, we really make, we try to leverage as much of- um, Even the art. A, a publicly available, um, uh, yeah, the PDF file is probably a little big, right? But you can, you can you know- um, Ah, um, stop it, computer. Sorry. <laughs> so you can get the, you can actually, you can actually get all the parts that are on here and actually, you know, if, if you're skilled enough to actually make one, um, uh, to make one yourself. Um, it, it's, I'm it's different. It. We don't yeah. have a, there is no for-profit arm of BeagleBoard, right? Um, BeagleBoard is exclusively a, a, a nonprofit foundation, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it doesn't mean people don't get, 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 get paid. Um, but, uh, you know, we just take a, um, a salary, uh, and, and, you know, it's a, a nonprofit, we give everything away that we can, um, and you know, and, and try to, to help people as much as possible, including if they want to go and, and, and make their own versions of the things that, that we create. Yeah. Um, I, I, one of the close ups, though, I saw you also could see that it's not just um, Microbus on here, we also have um, Grove and the um, oh, yes, Quick uh, or um, you know, Stemma QT um, connections on there. Um, right. So if you want to expand by on quick, it's all I squared C and then on the Grove, we have all of, um, I squared C UART. Um, you can do PWM. We've got A to D converters on it as well. So you can do like the digital or analog, um, IO over the, the, the Grove connection. Um, yeah, so all, and yeah. Both of those enabling so many different connections. The seed Grove ecosystem is massive as mm. is, uh, you know, STEM QT and Quick, that's Adafruit and SparkFun releasing stuff for this uh, form factor as well. Plus you have the microarray bus. So even if you may miss the uh, the CAPE format uh, structure, there's there's a lot out there that you'll still be able to use. Um, and for not, not a ton of extra investment, it's not like it's gonna break your bank, hopefully. Yeah, you don't have to go and buy an adapter board to go get started with it, right? So the idea is you know, we can, you can have instructions that are very direct on um, on how to use uh, those modules, and we'll be working with those partners. We we couldn't do much ahead of time because we couldn't um, really talk much public about it until it was actually available. Mm. Um, we you know we we've we really set it pretty hard that until distributors have boards, um, we don't want to talk about things publicly because we don't pe want people's hopes up or anything else. That, you know, we start talking about things, and people can't actually get it right. So there's stock of both of these boards at distributors today, right? So um, you know, if you go to, to Avnad Fernell on 114, or if you go to, you know, Mazur, DigiKey, or OKDo, OK right? Any, all those guys have these ports today, so you can get them. You can get them now. Get them now. No way. <laughs> get them now. <laughs> um, there's another thing as well. Uh, you call out that it has touchscreen display, a camera and touchscreen display. You've got uh, connectors for those on the board. Yeah. So, um, a whole little kiosk you can do. You could, and um, so there's um, the, the the guy Lincoln Display ha doesn't made their um, their displays readily available yet, right? But those will be you know available soon, I hope, right? So this is a, a ribbon cable here for the, the the display. If I can get my camera and figure out, mm. um, so this one here is for the for a touchscreen display. Um, so they've got L uh, ten inch panels and a nice uh, mount to, to kind of put those on. Um, and hopefully those will be available for, for purchase soon. Um, the camera is a 22 pin, like what's on the Pi Zero. Um, so it's, um, uh, yeah, so it's like a, the, the, the Pi Zero um, uh, 22 pin camera supports, right? So you can... bit... Yeah, which is a little bit smaller than the regular Pi camera connector. Uh, if you, you're using a Pi Zero, you got to use a, a little adapter for that. So regular Yeah, Pi but it has more pins like on it, right? Because the, the, the original yeah. Pi camera is 15 pin and the Pi Zero interface is 22 pin. So you got more lanes. So you can have higher resolution cameras. I did not cameras. realize that. Huh. Cool. Um, 
which is funny because I think the newer cameras come with the, the older connector just because they connect to more of the pies. But back to BeagleBoard, let's see. I had a couple questions. Do, 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 do. Um, <laughs> I like that you mentioned it's less intimidating than previous versions. Can you tell us a little bit about the various modifications you've done to make it more friendly to, to people who are just getting started? Yeah, um, so I think we touched on a bunch of them, right? The fact mm -hmm. that you're not trying to breadboard things, that you're just plugging in, you know, because we really want people to make hardware things. I mean, sure, it works just like a regular computer, right? So you can just plug it in. And to that end, to make things simpler is putting that full-size HDMI on there, right? So not having to deal with the, the small connections that I think the micro HDMI um, is not at all mm. user-friendly. It, you know, mm. um, it's that's functional in your limited board space and that's what you can do, then do it, right? But if you're trying to design something um, specifically to be simpler, I think that full size HDMI makes a, a big difference. Um, you know, just regular, you know, type C power. I think you don't have to um, worry about the, the power solutions, but that expansion um, is really the big part. And of course, um, being Beagle, right, it it, um, it ships with 16 gigabytes of flash pre-programmed with Debian, including that IDE, right? So you can mm. just, you know, point your web browser to it. You can plug in the USB cable. Um, and, and start developing, or you can plug in keyboard monitor and mouse and start developing um, with it as well. So those are the those are the big things um, about making it um, about making it simpler to use. Nice. And you mentioned also that you're um, looking to you're working on integrations with Home Assistant. And in terms of stuff like you know, a lot of people are talking about Zigbee and Matter right now. Uh, especially the Matter stuff is kind of new, but uh, it looks like that's something that. Uh, makes sense for people to be trying to sort of this is a place that the community can really come in and start playing around with it and building out these functionalities so that like everyone can connect it up to their matter systems but this isn't something that you're necessarily you're doing more home assistant stuff to to start with yeah so just it, it's a nice way to kind of visualize some of the, the data right so if you look at my um you know my my home i've got a bunch of beagle connects um st scattered around uh scattered around the house um and so there, i've got a, a little python utility that'll kind of listen um for their for their data um and they'll they'll broadcast um but it's not necessarily all that interesting to just look at these raw numbers when they're broadcast yeah it's like mm. light level and humidity level and temperature levels because they've got some some sensors um, built in i don't have any um clicks connected to these right now um, but I think more interesting, right, is just put the, putting that into to Home Assistant. So this is just using, um, you know, the MQTT broker um, to to provide some some visual updates to the different uh, Beagle Connects I have um, running around running around my house. Unfortunately, I don't have one next to me to to cover my hand over to see the light changes. Mm -hmm. But um, all right, most of these are in the dark in the basement. So. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I think that, um, you know, you can get started pretty quickly. Um, I'm going to be doing a webinar with kind of more detail on uh, how this is all um, set up to go from a Beagle Connect um, into a Beagle Play. Here, just using a Docker container to host um, um, Web Assistant on the, the, the Beagle Play. Um, and um, so it's, this is pretty easy to um, get up and going, but we'll do some some more um, presentation on, on the details. I think where just this starts to get even more interesting is when you start wanting to connect up to all the existing you know Zigbee or Matter um, devices in your home, um, and of course it's possible to completely reprogram that radio to support those different standards without adding any additional hardware. Mm -hmm. A couple things in there, yeah. Uh, oh, let me pull up this other one again. So uh, you mentioned it's pretty easy to reprogram. Uh, it, I assume you're talking about the Simple Link uh, microcontroller. It's got MicroPython. Yeah. Um, so we, we ship with MicroPython. So if I plug one in um, to, um, if I plug one in to my Beagle Play and answer, cancel out of that, right? You can see. It shows up as a, a serial device. Um, mm. TYCM0, okay. Um, why am I not? Uh, Demoitis again. Uh, back over here. Classic. Um, SSH. Everything gets more complex when you start throwing in streaming live video on top of it. 
<laughs> I think that there's probably a key press that um, the the browser is blocking. So um, two I ACM zero uh, locked by another process. Oh, it got in. Ah, well, it closed my tab here. Let's just close that app. <laughs> um, no, it really wants to kill. Where's To? There you are. And why are we not bringing up Python? Oh, yes, no, maybe so. Hmm. We've got some really cool questions coming in from the community. <laughs> we'll right, get to those in a moment. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, perfect timing. So yeah, uh, just to run back to one that came up a moment ago, Josh said, can you talk a bit about how the communication between the connect and the play work? And you did go into that and you mentioned that there's going to be a webinar coming up and where can people find that webinar that, that's going to be coming up? Um, so it's, um, uh, maybe I should make a short URL for it or something, but if you look at my, my Twitter feed, um, so, um, or the BeagleBoard Twitter feed, twitter.com slash, uh, BeagleBoard.org. Uh, we'll be doing an announcement there if it's not already Ooh. announced, maybe not announced. So it's going to be May 11th. Um, and I don't see it announced yet. So it's going to be on May 11th and, uh, and follow, uh, twitter.com slash BeagleBoard org for, for details. We'll be kind of going through all the details of getting home assistant up and running and how to make your, your Beagle connect, um, talk to the, to the Beagle play and provide, um, additional sensor data and custom sensors, um, so that you can take control over automating your home. Um, yeah. Sweet. We have another question from George who says, will there be a new OS that we can load to the black and blue boards that integrates the new VS code dev, dev environment? Um, absolutely. Um, so that's already Ooh. available, right? So if you go and it's not just not showing on our latest images page, right? Which is kind of like the, the stuff where we've done um, like more of the documentation updates. But if you go into our monthly snapshots, um, you can already get VS code for, for both of those boards, right? So if you go into um, the forum um, and look for the monthly snapshots, um, you can get VS code for, for each of those, the blue cool. and black. And yeah, I wanted to mention that you've got these amazing, uh, all these different community options, actually. There's a uh, GitLab live chat forums newsletter, and uh, the forum is here, forum.beagleboard.org. And you're talking about finding the snapshots in here. Uh, I will leave that as an exercise for the. Yeah, if, it could, if it's either going to be in the. the okay, sure. Or, or, you know, what? Where would we find um, it? I, I think they're in the FAQ. Um, I think there's a monthly. Yep, you see. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, monthly snapshots, right? So whenever in doubt, check the FAQ. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. That was so um, easy. Great. So there you go, George. Let's see. Um, <laughs> if BeagleBone comes in a low cost version like Pi Zero W, it will be very useful to work for IoT pro projects. I feel like there are pretty low cost. So the the Beagle Connect Freedom. <laughs> yep, it's about thirty uh, bucks. It's about thirty so bucks. So it's twenty twenty eight fifty. There you go, twenty eight fifty. Um, Right there on Newark. It's true. It's not quite at the at the five dollar mark. Are you no. looking to make? There is the Pocket Beagle as well, which is smaller. I don't think that it is uh, necessarily super low cost like the Pi Zero W, but it's a very. Uh, <laughs> I'm really resisting the urge to say adorable, but uh, a fun little platform for that fits in a mini Altoids tin uh, and another good like small version of Beagleboard uh, Beaglebone to uh, use for smaller projects. And, and we, we try really hard for it not to be on Obtanium. Um, I think there's, mm. uh, um, if that's, if that's a common word, um, oh, for sure. you know, we, we, I mean, we, we, you know, we're not, um, you know, you, you pay more, you pay less. We're not making um, more money. Um, so, um, you know, we, we try to get it as low cost as, as, as possible. Right. But these things cost real money to make. Right. So, mm. um, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, if you have a schools or, you know, other things that you want to set up in the lab, right. Where you're really cost sensitive, right. Um, mm. the foundation can make donations to schools, 
um, to try to get things set up. And, you know, we've, we've done that uh, several times to set up, you know, lab rooms or, um, you know, things for like, like robotics labs um, with, with boards, right? So the foundation can, you know, possibly, you know, support you on that. But um, yeah, a $5 Linux computer, I don't think is all that um, real, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, I, don't, I don't think the economics are really there yet. Um, whatever, Legit. My, whatever you might be told in advertising, or maybe even be able to get one or two of them, but that doesn't mean somebody can make them on uh, at any volume level. Mm. Uh, I have a question for you about uh, collaborations. So I'm not sure how, like, when you're uh, obviously you're very tightly integrated, uh, talking very tightly with uh, Microelectronica mm. right now around those clickboards. Yeah. I'm not certain how much uh, inter uh, communication there is to put like a Grove connector or a Quick connector on your board, uh, but I'm curious about if there's any other. Um, collaborations or similar sort of interoperability things you're looking at doing? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, we've been, you know, we chat with the the, the folks at SparkFun and of course, um, you know, Seed is actually the manufacturer of these boards, right? So we talk to them all the time. So mm. um, yeah, we're going to be pretty involved in, in trying to update the documentation, um, you know, both on our site and their site on how to use these things together, right? So, um, you know, again, we weren't able to really get started um, ahead of making it available, but now everybody has them available so we can kind of work on the documentation all together. Yeah, and Seed has amazing documentation as well. Uh, yeah. This is just like one random one of their modules, but they've all got this connector like we were talking about, and they just have really good uh, tutorials about how to get this stuff up and running. Yeah. Uh, and and, be... and, and you know, the nice thing for, for us, I think, is we're just going to have a lot less code in the tutorials, right? Because mm. you, you don't have to figure out how to talk the, to the device first, right? You've already got Linux drivers to talk to the device. All you have to do is kind of talk to the Linux drivers. Yeah, that's super cool. Let's see. Um, so industrial IoT is listed as one of the main applications for this. You've got them scattered around your house. Home automation being one of the our wrong page. <laughs> uh, but home automation being one of the main uh, targets mm -hmm. for this technology. Here we go. Um, building automation. Yeah, so I've actually been like, like doing like, because a lot of times I kind of take stuff I do on my own. Um, I take technology that like, actually employing in, in, you know, in, into products um, and, and try to make that more accessible to people. And that's a lot of what, um, you know, we kind of do at Beagle, right? So I've been using, um, these, thir these little 1352 microcontrollers and Linux gateways for, for a while, do things like, um, air quality monitoring and, and, and restaurants, and, um, you know, monitoring, um, you know, HVAC systems and stuff, right? So it's, um, um, right. This stuff, this stuff is already being used, right? So I think it's pretty practical, um, to go and, and, and try to, um, you know, make home automation, building automation, um, you know, factory automation things with these, because that's, you know, we're, we're using that same technology that other people, that, that I've been using personally and other people have been using as well to, to make those things. Yeah, and uh, since we did the sort of a look into the board for, or <laughs> the board, the box for the Beagle Play, maybe we should go really quick through the Beagle Connect Freedom, because you've got all these uh, sensors built in, you've got light, temperature, humidity. You've also got, as we were mentioning before, those four programmable LEDs and a programmable button. Let's just take a look in the box for that one, maybe. Yeah, I, I think the um, the microcontroller in there is, um, I mean, the stuff that we add on the board is pretty cool, but the microcontroller itself is is, is pretty impressive. It's, a, it's an M4, um, but it's got this M0 on it that's, that's a, a software programmable radio. Um, that you can do all these different bands. If you wanted, you can even do like, um, like, you know, like 433 megahertz and all these other things. Of course, you know, it's only, we're, we're only, at, you know, FCC certifying and stuff in that, um, and that was like the, the, you know, the 800, 900 megahertz um, ranges and as well as the 2.4 gigahertz. Um, we put a, a little microcontroller in there. You'll see that USB port up at the top, it's at that type C. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a little micro, there's an MSP430 in there. Um, that you can use to reprogram the 1352, um, as well as act as a, a console UART. Um, there's also a piezo in there, so if you want to make oh, some, cool. some, some, some beeping sounds just to annoy your neighbors. Yes. Um, <laughs> or just to find out where you put it, right? So a little beckoning call, it's like, where is that device? Um, 
Well, I am curious. Um, you mentioned uh, using these for air quality monitoring, which is something I'm very <clears> interested in. Uh, uh, and that's something where I would be like, oh, yeah, maybe beep at me if like the CO2 is building up too much and like we need to open a absolutely. window or something. Uh, and yeah. what, what is your preferred sensor for that? Do you have one? I've been using the Sensiri and stuff, and there's kind of a, 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 a you know, a library of, 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 you know, sensors that they have available. I'm not super happy with their openness, um, um, but, um, but they do make good quality um, sensors. You know, if you're looking, you're talking about CO2, something like the SCD41 is really popular and, and, and I, you know, I use that one as well. Um, right. If you don't want to try to get into, um, I mean, there's certainly some, some, some more expensive ones, but I think it's a nice, um, middle of the road, uh, uh, CO2 sensor. Um, yeah. Um, but these guys have a, a, you know, a great, um, you know, library of, 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 you know, off the shelf, pretty hackable sensors with, you know, you know, decent support in, um, in Linux kernels as well as, um, um, you know, other, uh, their Linux kernel support is not what I want it to be, but, um, you know, you, you can, um, you can get there from here. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. So the, but I, you know, the, you can get a bunch of these through the, the clicks, right? So they actually have a uh, um, Sensorian clicks that you could use to, to prototype. And I know that um, Adafruit and, um, and SparkFun, at least, at least I'm sure about Adafruit also has, um, um, you know, some of these air quality, um, uh, sensors available. Um, yeah, there's even if you just go look at the sensors, there's an air quality. Oh, um, yeah, look at all these. Um, yeah, I'm so I think that this is a real opportunity for doing science where you can do a lot of different remote monitoring, right? You can do vibration monitoring, you can do, um, yeah, air quality monitoring. Um, and, and, and so you can really try to make it a lot simple for people that aren't necessarily that. You know, they're not computer scientists or scientists or electrical engineers. They just want to plug something in and start retrieving some data. Um, and um, you know, I think that we've got the the hardware um, and kind of the underlying software to get there. And now we just kind of you know put some of those 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 things together and um, and really enable a lot more people to kind of monitor their world. Yes, love it. Um, and not and not have to buy it from somebody right that's going to control your data right you get to decide what you're going what you're going to do with this data right um absolutely very good uh, I, I love the focus on sort of uh locally locally controlled tech and privacy focused tech always solid uh i do have a quick question but for you uh so the last time we're, we're coming vaguely to the end here and uh before we wrap up i wanted to ask you last time you were on here uh we talked about the beaglebone ai64 and i'm curious since it's been uh you know almost well nine months ish um since then i'm curious what kinds of things you've seen people do with this board and uh how's that going uh, it's going great. Um, so, I mean, the forum is kind of blown up with the AI64 stuff, right? So you can see all sorts of stuff on the the, the forum regarding the the, the AI64. Um, you know, I think you know some people are having fun with the R5 and kind of doing R5 native programming, doing debugger-based um, R5 development on there. Um, so um, I know somebody's got um, uh, you know GDB and essentially Open OCD um, running. Um, between the cores, right? So from the A72 cores, you're running GDB on the um, the R5, R5 cores now. Um, so you can debug your your, your real time um, code, um, and of course, you know, there's just the you know you've got the the inference engine going at the same time, right? So if people don't remember, right, the you, you're able to run um, the different like kind of Python um, um, neural network stuff, right? So the um, Onyx, uh, um, uh, TensorFlow Lite um, on there, right? So, um, yeah, and, you know, I'm kind of excited that uh, Imagination has been doing a lot of work on the open source graphics driver. I'm looking very forward to declaring success on having an open source GPU driver. Uh, there's a, um, yeah, there's a, a second, um, so they're, they're starting off with the GPU that's actually on the Beagle Play rather than the, um, um, the AI64, 
Um, but Imagination is actually doing some some training. Uh, they've, they've got a, a, a class that they offer for doing neural network stuff with the um, um, the GPU um, on the AI64. Um, and you know, they're continuing to do um, additional um, uh, support right beyond just what they're doing for the Beagle Play, right? So the Beagle Play, um, they're actively working and making it a fully open source uh, driver, but a lot of that work um, can be leveraged on the, the AI64 as well. Um, I can probably follow up with a link to their um, AI64 um, training that Imagination has. Cool. Yeah, let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, you said it was Imagination. I, I missed that first Yeah, part. Imagination is the, the folks that make the Power VR um, GPUs. Oh, yeah. I think they also make the GPUs and, and stuff like the, the iPhone. Um, and I think that was kind of a basis for, for what, like, the, the, you know, when Apple did their Macs. I'm not positive about that. I shouldn't, I shouldn't throw out these mm -hmm. speculations. But, um, you know, it's, um, uh, yeah, having that, that, that GPU, um, uh, you know, kernel side driver and everything be open source, right? They'll still just be a blob that you have to load on. Yeah, the fun with Beagle. Um, so a lot of those use the BeagleBone Black. Um, uh -huh. but they've got a new version of um, Fun with Beagle that uses the AI64. Um, cool. So, so that's may something to look up on that. May not yet be on YouTube, right? Um, but um, they've got a they've got a class for that. It may still be um, registration based. I'm not sure. Cool. Probably somewhere under here once it shows up. Imagination Technologies. Better subscribe there. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is so awesome. Jason, tell us what's next. What can we look forward to? Uh, you got... Oh, wrong way. Uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> what's next? Well, I, I, um, you know, we're... Um, anything we could do to kind of um, help open up um things for 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 people um to build electronics that that they control um they can control the data um you know they can um build things quicker and easier um we've got a lot of stuff in the pipe unfortunately we don't want to talk about it until you can buy it at distributors mm -hmm. um and um you know but i can i can say we we haven't given up on the um uh the pocket beagle and beagle bone form factors um, so, you know, I, I'm feel pretty invigorated with this new AM62 platform, um, from, from TI. So I think we'll be doing a lot more with that. Um, you know, and we're continuing to, to try to do things to open up more of the, um, uh, you know, you more on what you can do with, with, with those devices and, and otherwise, right. So, um, you know, the. I think the the single pair Ethernet kind of kind of stands out as something yeah. that um, you know you can you, Spark Fun has a few things that you can talk to, but I think that um, um, yeah, I think that that kind of calls out for um, um, for maybe some more stuff um, somewhere down the road. So uh, th there's a lot, but like I said my desk is full of, uh, full of things that um, I, I can't show you, but um, it's. Uh, <laughs> Um, it's cool. I, you know, just, just more documentation around, um, you know, play in 64, right? If you saw our new doc site, we saw you have that Git site, um, working on a new website as well. Um, so I think that, we're, you know, you know, we're really going to spend a lot of time focusing on improving the documentation for users. Mm, yeah. Everyone don't forget that you can find all that stuff on the website. Let me pull it up here. Uh, we're going to put the link to that in the description of the video in the future so you can find that. But also, it, I yeah. found it pretty easy to find. You just go to the uh, explore or learn. There we go. With documentation. Uh, you find this page and all that good stuff. Um, yeah. Docs.beagleboard.org docs wasn't around last year, right? So, yeah, this is this has been since Love we met last year. So cool. <laughs> and, and, there's and, a, and there's a little edit on GitLab, right? So this is part of where the GitLab came from. Mm -hmm. Right, our own instance of GitLab, right? If you're in the docs site, um, there's an edit button on the doc pages um, oh, so that you can get to the, the, Git, the Git source for the doc pages. If you go back to docs.beagleboard.org, if you just hit the, um, yeah, you see that edit on GitLab in the top right? Ah, oh, check that out. Yeah, so the source, wow. 
um, for the documentation, right, is there That's so people so cool. can submit uh, pull requests, right, so we can be entirely community sourced. And so we're, we're actually we're using our GitLab to automatically build um, the documentation as people nice. submit patches and, um, yeah, um, got auto builders there. Where, you know, you can build new custom disk images if you want to um, through this. So. We're having a lot of fun with the with the get the docs pages. Nice. I got a uh, let's see. There's a couple of questions that I'd love to get to just uh, to wrap up with. So actually, I missed this one before. Jeff uh, asked, "Can you write your own proto st protocol stack for one of the supported standards and run that on the Zephyr board?" I believe you were saying yes. People can do that. For example, for Matter or uh, Thread. Yeah, absolutely. So so the the driver that that we've got today on the, on One X is. Um, you know, kind of a, a, a uh, the, the terminology, I guess, would be more like a thick Mac um, driver. We, we leverage the WPAN USB um, uh, driver that's 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 kind of not yet fully completed up to, in, in my mind. Um, but but a lot of people are using a, a thin Mac approach um, where they'll put the routing onto the Zephyr board. That's because there's there's the there's the the this board is running Zephyr, but there's also here this the the, the radio circuit that's inside of here is also right there, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's running uh, Zephyr as well. So you could put into that um, like a full routing stack. We've got a Google Google Summer Code hopefully coming up, and um, I, I think I don't think we've announced some projects, but there's some proposals to kind of rewrite that to um, to put more of the routing layers into um, into that coprocessor essentially. Um, and, and that makes it hope with the idea of making it easier to switch protocols and still keep the connection to the Linux stack. Right. So, um, right now those things are kind of separate, right? So the firmware does the like thread or, um, you know, matter or, or Zigbee, um, you know, and, and the such, right. And then, um, and then Linux needs some way to, to talk to that, right? If you just want to do UART stuff, that's fine. But if you want to do something um, where you're actually using Linux to manage your routing tables and all that other stuff, then um, that's where our driver really comes into play. Mm -hmm. We have a slightly spicy question at the end, uh, just asking about for the future, you know, is there, uh, is there a reason that the RAM is vaguely limited uh, in terms of machine learning, uh, which kind of makes sense as a question, uh, will there ever be a Beagle product that has at least eight gigs of RAM? And I know that AI64, as we mentioned, is, is designed for machine learning and AI, but yeah. Yeah, um, you know, we're trying to keep these things affordable and embedded, embeddable. Mm -hmm. um, I know that a lot of tools kind of like blow up their, their usage and some of the models you can, can use um, a, a ton of memory. Um, I'd say, you know, um, come raise a fuss on the forums. Tell us that there's <laughs> demand. Um, you know, let distributors know that there's demand. We can always um, make those um, versions, but we don't want to price these things such that people don't buy them. Um, mm. All right, so um, you know, it's 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 certainly something we can do. Um, but um, yeah, just come raise a fuss on the forums, and we'll talk about it. Yeah, nice. Um, and you know, just mentioning that there are definitely microcontrollers that are doing this with like way less. So it, it probably depends yeah, on the, yeah. the fact that you choose, and, you know. And I mean, four gigabytes is a lot of memory, right? So, it, it, you know, it, don't, it doesn't feel like it when we're used to, you know, these computer workstations with, you know, gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes of memory, right? But um, that you're working on. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. Um, you know, so we don't want everybody to have to pay for the the, the price that, that you know somebody would have to pay for to get those those that function right. So, um, but if there's enough demand for it and and people want to buy it, then you know we're you know aware of that. Um, we could certainly build them, right? That's not a problem. Solid. All right, yeah. So you have your answer, Dale. You want uh, if you want to see it built, go raise a fuss. Uh, and the place to raise the fuss <laughs> is on the forums. Uh, so going really quick back through the pages we looked at, uh, 
be sure to go follow Jason, follow BeagleBoard.org, especially if you're interested in that webinar about connecting together the Beagle Play and Beagle Connect Freedom Boards that we looked at today. Uh, you can find those on BeagleBoard.org or BeagleBoard. or BeaglePlay. Yeah, Beagle Play and Beagle yes. Connect. Yeah, both those are kind of vanity yeah. links that kind of come back to the right pages, right? So if you just remember oh, Beagle yeah. Connect. Type dot beagleconnect.org and you'll get to the right page. Ooh, well, I can't type right now, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we've also got uh, all the documentation and which you can edit on GitLab yourself. Uh, and also you can download enclosures for, for example, the Beagle Play board to hold all those little antennas in place. Um, Go check out the forums. That's the place to kick up a fuss if you want to see something created or if you want to build it yourself and then share it with everybody. Um, you know, it's all open source. You can make your own version. Woo! Uh, I know that that's a little bit of a facetious answer, but it's true. And uh, go check out our article on it. You can find the boards on Newark as well as uh, tons of other suppliers, which you can find on the official product pages. Just go down here and hit select distributor or pick one from the list here. And you can find uh, links in the description below for all these pages and more. Jason, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> Alex, thank, thank you, you so much for having me. I always enjoy chatting with you. Thank you everyone for joining us and hack on. <laughs>